Hi, I'm Chris Frame and welcome back to my channel. With the global cruising shutdown entering into the seventh month since the global cruising pause began, I thought it was a good time to take a look at all the various cruise ships and what they're up to during this period of long-term layup. Back in April 2020, when I did my first video about where the cruise ships were, all 300 of the world's cruise ships were already in warm layup or were busy repatriating passengers and crew. You can see a video about that here, which I've also linked in the description below. But in the months since, things have changed a bit. And in fact, some cruise lines have already recommenced sailings. This includes MSC's Grandiosa, Costa Deliciosa, and Hapag Lloyd's Europa 2, as well as Hanseatic Inspiration. We've also seen several river cruising companies recommence river cruises, particularly in Europe. While two of the ships from the Hertegruten fleet have been chartered for use as accommodation ships, for the cast and crew of the new Mission Impossible movie. AIDA had planned to resume cruising in September, with AIDA Perla. However, the line's first voyage will now take place in November, aboard the smaller AIDA Mar, which is currently located in Denmark. But while some ships have resumed cruising, the majority of the world's cruise ships still remain in layout and are yet to return to passenger service, while we have seen a number of ships withdrawn from service completely and sold for scrapping. This includes Carnival's Fantasy and Inspiration, as well as Pormontor's Sovereign and Monarch. We've also seen Costa Victoria and Carnival Inspiration withdrawn from service and awaiting scrapping. While the future of Pormontor's Horizon, Morella's Celebration and Fred Olsen's Black Watch and Boudicca looks bleak, with those four ships all withdrawn from service. You might be interested in my video about recycling cruise ships which you can check out here or in the description below. The vast majority of cruise ships however remain in layup. Most of these are in warm layup meaning they are still partially crewed and operating under their own power. However, with many lines extending their cruise shutdown periods, it's getting more and more likely that cruise ships will enter into cold layup. But as the majority of cruise ships remain in warm layup, let's start there. Many of the ships are currently anchored or moored off the coast, often in large groups and often close to populated areas. These ships are currently the ones creating the most interest as people are flocking to these areas to catch a glimpse of this extraordinary sight. In Great Britain, the ships of Cunard and P&O UK can be seen in various locations. Southampton remains the primary port for these ships, with each member of the fleet visiting on a semi-regular basis, to allow for crew changes and reprovisioning. While not in port, ships of the Cunard and P&O fleets have been spotted off the coast of Bournemouth, while QM2 has also had an extended anchorage of Tynmouth. QM2 was recently joined in Babacombe, in Devon, by Arcadia, Ventura and Azura of the p UK fleet, while Arcadia and Queen Victoria have also anchored off Southwold. Weymouth remains a popular location for cruise ships off the UK coast, with several members of the Morella Cruises fleet anchoring off the coast here. These ships have spent extended time here, along with Queen Elizabeth, Queen Victoria and P&O's Britannia. While Royal Caribbean's Anthem of the Seas and Allure of the Seas have been regular sites in Southampton, Disney Magic has been a regular site in Dover, while Disney Dream and Disney Fantasy are in Brest, France. Disney Wonder remains far from her fleetmates in Port Canaveral. Many of the cruise ships from Costa and MSC's fleets remain off the coast of Italy, calling it La Spizia, Genoa and Civitavecchia. Aida's European-based fleet is quite spread out, with Las Palmas home to Aida Stella and Aida Bella, while to the north, Aida Cara and Aida Ora are based off the coast of Estonia while Aida Diva and Aida Perla are off the coast of Denmark. You might have seen in previous videos of mine that the waters in the Philippines, particularly off Manila, had become a hub for cruise ships, with a huge cluster of cruise ships forming here throughout April, May and June. However, at the time of recording, only Carnival Spirit remained off the coast of Manila, kept company by a huge cluster of cargo ships and oil tankers. The cruise ships that were based in Manila before were mainly the ships that were sailing in Southeast Asia and Australia, as well as New Zealand. When the cruise pause first came into effect, it was originally only scheduled for up to 60 days, and so it made sense to keep these ships in this local area so they could resume cruising when the cruise pause was lifted. However, as we know, the cruise pause has been continuously extended. As the cruise pause dragged on, cruise lines opted to send their ships to other destinations to either help facilitate crew changeovers or to allow for their redeployment in alternative locations once the cruise pause ends. The waters off Singapore and Malaysia have become the new hub for laid up cruise ships in Asia, with many of the ships previously based in Manila now at anchor off Johor. This includes the ships of Princess, Costa, Aida, 
Celebrity, Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Cruise Lines. Ports in Australia and New Zealand remain vacant of any cruise ships, as the respective cruise bans remain in place in both countries. As a result, the P&O Australia fleet remain away from their usual Australian home ports. Pacific Dawn and Pacific Aria, both due to exit the P&O Australia fleet, have sailed for Cyprus, where they remain at anchor, along with ships from Seabourn and Princess, while the P&O Pacific Explorer is at anchor off Singapore. The Bahamas is another great place to spot ships, with the largest cluster of cruise ships currently at anchor off the Bahamas. This includes much of the fleet of Carnival, as well as numerous ships from Royal Caribbean and Celebrity. More Royal Caribbean ships can be seen off Barbados, while Seabourn Sojourn, Norwegian Pearl and Coral Princess are all currently in the vicinity of Curacao. As I said earlier, whilst most of the cruise ships remain in warm layup, several cruise lines are starting to consider cold layup options. You can check out a video about the difference between warm layup and cold layup in the info card or the description below. Carnival recently announced this style of long-term storage would occur aboard Carnival Fascination, while future candidates for cold layup may include the ships of CMV, which ceased operations in July. Cold layup is more economical over long periods of storage, as the cruise ship is effectively shut down and no longer operating on its own engines and thus doesn't require the same level of personnel on board the ship. However, there is a downside to cold layup. It takes a lot longer and is a lot more expensive to reactivate the ship after a period of cold layup. And this is one of the reasons why many of the cruise lines have opted to go with the warm layup or hot layup options, because whilst it does cost more in the short term, it's much quicker to redeploy the ships once the cruising ban is lifted. However, with signs pointing to most cruise ships not recommencing sailings until early to mid 2021, it may be inevitable that other options of storing ships will be explored. There are of course plenty of other areas where ships are currently laid up. You can find ships off the coast of Dubai, off the coasts of the United States, as well as in other Asian and European destinations. If you are keeping track of these ships and where they are, and have taken photographs of them, be sure to tag me on Instagram and Twitter on the handle Chris Cunard. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I would like to send my thanks to Andrew Sassoli Walker, a Southampton based photographer who always provides me with access to his fantastic imagery of the ships in Southampton. Thanks so much again for watching and when it is safe for us to travel again, I hope to see you on board.